Hello artists. Today we're going to create a Tim Burton inspired self-portrait. Here are the materials that we need. We're going to use this gray paper to use as a mid-tone. We'll need a regular pencil for sketching out ideas, an ebony pencil for darker shading, and a white colored pencil, china marker, or white crayon for highlights. In our class, you'll also have um, some templates that you can choose from if you want to use them or create a head shape of your own. So let's get started. The very first thing I will do is write my name on the back of my paper. I want to make sure my paper is vertical, tall, instead of wide, and I'll flip it over to the clean side. Now, we want our head to be symmetrical. That means the same on the left as it is on the right. My two longest sides of my paper are on the sides and I'm going to match the two long edges of my paper together to get a nice very long crease from the top to the bottom of my vertical paper. Sometimes in the art room we call this a hot dog fold because it's long and skinny like a hot dog bun. Now when we open up our paper and press it flat, we still see a crease going from the top to the bottom. And this is where I will put my head shape. Now I'm going to provide you with some uh, diagrams to help you come up with a great Tim Burton style portrait. Notice that the head is symmetrical. Halfway down we have some very large eyes, a small nose, and a very small mouth are classic examples of Tim Burton style. Thin long necks are also an option. So let's get started. I'm going to use some resources or reference guides and these are just ideas you can come up with your own or use these as a jumping off point. I can use the templates that are provided in class and the great thing about these shapes is that they can flip so that you can get an even more uh, broad range of shapes. This is half of a head so you're going to find the one that you like best. Again, you do not have to use any of these. You can create your own. I've chosen one that I think would work best for me and I'm going to line up the long flat edge against the fold and with a regular pencil I'm going to very lightly trace onto the gray paper. Once I have that shape I will flip the image, line it up again on the crease and trace that side. This will give me a symmetrical head shape for my Tim Burton in style uh, portrait. Looking at my reference guide, I can see that halfway down the head is where I will have the eyes. I might draw a very thin guideline to sort of get me started. Now you can draw the eyes in many different ways, but if you choose to have a perfectly circular eye, you might want to use one of the art room compasses. Going back to my reference guide, I can see that I need to place some ears at the halfway mark of the eyes and below. And when I look at the reference guide, I can determine what kind of nose I think would work best, what type of eyes, what type of mouth. All of these choices will help you create your portrait in the style of a Tim Burton character. For me, I'm choosing this upturned nose. And I think I will come up with a unique style mouth.
and I might add a few details like the lips. For me, I'm choosing to not do a neck and instead uh, show the shoulders and the collar of my shirt. You can do a long, thin neck in the style of Tim Burton characters, but sometimes they don't show their neck. You have to choose what's right for you. Don't forget details like buttons with buttonholes, classic Tim Burton stripes, and other accessories. In the idea packet that you will be offered in the art room, you'll see that there are many different hairstyles that might give you an idea of what to use. Of course, creating your own is always a preferred option. You can just use the idea sheet to uh, get an idea or have a jumping off point. Create your own hairstyle that matches what you uh, style your hair like each day. In your idea sheet packet, you'll also see examples of eyebrows and accents for the eyes. I'm going to choose two different style eyebrows and sort of merge them together. Uh, I like the shape of one and I think the other style looked more uh, like my thicker eyebrows that I have in real life. Eyebrows are a great way to add character and expression into your drawing. Now, here's a detail that I need to add, but you certainly don't. Uh, because I have a beard, I need to add that into my portrait so that it looks more like me. So. You can see that I'm adding some lines to connect the hairline, uh, the shape of my beard to complete the look before I move on to the ebony pencil. An ebony pencil writes much darker than a regular pencil and we will need that to bring out the darker parts of our picture. Now, normally we draw on white paper and we use a pencil or other writing tool to put marks that are darker than the paper um, so that we can see the image that we're drawing. In this case, we're using a gray paper which is called a midtone. It's in the middle. It's not quite dark, but it's not quite light either. So we've started in the middle instead of the bright color of white. Now we're adding the darker values, the blacks and the dark grays into our picture. Ebony pencil will help us do that because it marks so much darker than a regular pencil. We can really get um, a dark quality uh, in our picture. Now, Ebony Pencil does have uh, a shine on it, so that's why you'll see some parts in this picture look silvery bright, but that is just the light shining off of it. One excellent technique is to use your finger or a piece of paper towel or tissue to rub. Ebony Pencil will blend quite well, and you can smudge and soften lines by rubbing your finger or a tissue over the marks that you've made. A classic part of a Tim Burton character are the dark circles and the dark shading that are around the eyes. It sort of gives our character a gloomy or sometimes sinister look. To 
do that, you can see that I'm lightly shading with my ebony pencil. And then using my finger, I'm going over and around the shape that I want it to be blended into. I'm going to add some darker values into the eyelids. And I will darken the pupils in the eyes. Once I complete the eyes, then I will turn my attention to the other facial features. Nose, cheek, lips, um, and the rest of my hair. Now, I wear glasses, and this can be a very scary detail to add to any portrait because you're drawing something very large over top of the face. A, a trick that I've learned when drawing glasses is to draw the bridge of the nose, the, the band that goes across your nose first, and then you can start drawing the sides of the glasses and the tops and the bottoms and slowly create the shape of the glasses around your eyes. Once you finish the details of the face, you can turn your attention to the clothing that you're wearing. Tim Burton typically tries to squeeze in at least one character in a film wearing black and white stripes. That might be a detail you want. Now we're going to turn our attention to the highlights and lighter areas of our work. Areas like our forehead, the whites of our eyes, maybe cheeks, uh, the nose, some lips. Those are going to be used with a white china marker or white colored pencil. I have what I call a skunk stripe, uh, a gray streak in my hair, so I made sure to accent that with the white. The bridge of my nose, again the whites of my eyes, just to bring those qualities out and make them stand out. Don't forget the highlights in your eyes, And there you have it, a Tim Burton inspired self-portrait.